So, jo- uh, it's Jonah Gottlieb Benjamin Siegert. It almost tastes like absinthe and chocolate, though. Yeah, chocolate, huh? Yeah. So, so just to, Siegert. Just to say what we did, we, we added a little bit of seltzer water mm-hmm. to, to the bitters, so we don't get the harsh bitterness flavor, but we also get to uh, experience the uh, flavor. individual flavors of the bitters. Without having a cocktail getting in the way. Well, yeah, without having a cocktail getting in the way. And without burning our face off. So what I did here... That's actually really tasty. It's uh, not bad, huh? Yeah. It's it's least, even a little seltzer. bit of spicy heat. I would even drink this with some ice. <laughs> actually, that's what they used to do. Like back, back in the day before cocktails were really cocktails, mm. that was what you have there as a home remedy. Yeah. It was like soda, bitters. You take that before bed. You can still do it now if you have a stomach. Yeah. Ache. Why not? You can use that instead of whatever. Well, crackers. ginger ale usually. Or ginger ale. Ginger yeah, ginger ale is another one. Same um, And I have that's these in ordered. The pay shots is really interesting, like that. Yeah, this one, but it's do you get the chocolate out of it. Like a, not like a bitter chocolate, like cocoa. Yeah, yeah, it's weird. But I don't get that. If you just drink that straight, it not doesn't taste like chocolate. This is this product here, the standard Angostura, oh. was from 1842. So what I did is I lined them up in the years that they were okay. they were produced. So yeah, this yeah, is yeah. this is an evolution. This 1860. is 1842. What's that? 1869 here. 1869. Let me see what I got. I got 1938, but. Uh, oh, it says 1869 right there. The Grand Exhibition of Altona, Germany. Yeah, that's oh, I awarded that. probably the, the yeah, mm-hmm. my date's more commercial day, okay. I think. Okay. Um, so, Johan, uh, Johan, Johan, yeah, Johann? or Johan. 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 Because Johan studied Sebastian medicine. Bach? No, but he was from Germany. Different one. So, Johan was a German doctor. So they must know each other, though. They must. Obviously. <laughs> German like being from Maine. I don't know. Oh, my cousin's from Portland. No, I don't know your cousin. Uh, 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 I don't know who your cousin is. Um, so, the the story goes that this was like this the first. Saying, yeah, I know him. He's a douche. This is the show. <laughs> That's the first commercial. Like the the Peugeot is considered kind of like the first commercial bitter. Okay. Angostura was kind of the first bitter uh, in existence. So, if you go back to the 1800s, you have this guy creating this this product in Venezuela, and then from there. That Venezuela has some political issues, so they he moved out and he went to Trinidad. And There's still there political f- issues. Uh, probably other two. But they've been having political issues for a while. He's been creating bitters for a while. Of course, not him anymore. He's long dead. Yeah, you would think. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Unless bitters give you long life. Uh, Good. They could. Well, but they froze his head. It didn't work because he died. His family okay. took over. One of the brothers eventually got it or something. And this guy? Yeah. Dr. J.G. <laughs> Johan? Johan. So after that, See it you. ended up in the hands of the creditors because everything screwed up. But it survived, and there's only I think five people who know the recipe. Oh, that's crazy. So Hopefully I don't know they how that'll live in a while. Yeah, I'm guessing they're We're there's a redundant. They can't all be on the plan at the same time. There's gonna be some sort of rules and logistics. You would, you would think, or they should write it down and put it in a safety deposit box somewhere. And then, then yeah, and I guess they pass. But it then on. someone could kill them. Well, eventually that will happen. Someone will kill them. <laughs> I guess they'll eventually die. No, they, they don't necessarily have to be killed. Um, the other thing that was kind of interesting about the Angostura... <laughs> I think Ian brought salsa water oh he's gosh. all over. He's cruising. I'm, cruising trying I'm trying the orange one now. <laughs> so the orange is a new one. In 2009, they had a massive Angostura shortage because of a bottle problem. Okay. So they kind of disappeared. And they were during that time, if you look, these guys all came way later. So you're looking at, I think, 2005-ish. We'll figure that out in a minute. Mm-hmm. But around that time when these guys were all growing by 2009 when you have an absence of a bitter that everybody uses in like every cocktail yep you need to find replacements maybe 2006 so uh-huh. a lot of these brands jumped at that opportunity to be the replacement the ones that sure yeah around in 2009 i think 2006 for these guys which would help grow them yeah it's vi five ish six i think six so probably came here did you ever find out any kind of truth about why their labels stick over their bottles there's the, the Angostura. Yeah. No, there's the only rumor is that the bottle and the the bottle was yeah. designed by one person, labeled by somebody else, yeah. and somebody put them together. And I'm like, oh crap! And then they just kept it that way. And then they said, fuck it. But I mean, think about it. If that's the story you go with, you're talking about people. Only five people know the recipe. They should all, only know that one real story and keep it because that's a better story. To yeah. say, hey, that's how this all came, and people could talk about it and, and talk about the brand and want to buy it because it's got these oversized labels. Yeah. This one was made. Recently, this is a new uh, an answer to Orange yeah, Bitters. They still have it. it. It's, yeah. yeah, you can't change it at that point. It's now part of your, your brand. brand. And nobody else has that. The closest would be these guys because they actually hand-wrap hand them. Um, so, pretty cool. 
These, the pay showed, comes from a guy, a Creole from um, uh, San Domingo, which is Haiti. San Domingo, okay. So Haiti is the the originator, Doctor Pay showed, or uh, what is his name, Antian, Anti, how would you say, Antian, 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 Amimadi, Amadi. Is it Antoine? Is that considered Antoine? Yeah, Antoine. Uh, Mr. Peychaud. Yes, Mr. Peychaud. Uh, so he creates this. He comes over. He's a pharmacist. He he creates a fa- he takes a family recipe. He builds it. He's like, this is really cool. He starts serving it at his coffee house, which is a, another word for a place where you can buy alcohol, uh, and putting cognac in it. And that was his cur- curative. And that got around. Right now, all the coffee houses want Peychauds. Mm-hmm. Then the Sazerac coffee house gets this like this crazy uh, cognac imported. They build their cocktails with it or whatever it is. They actually was in a, in a jigger, which okay, was called yep. a uh, coctier. And Coctier-y. some people re- okay. think that's where the word cocktail comes from. Other people say it was way before that. And so then all of a sudden the Sazerac house is making all these drinks, which of course originates the Sazerac, which now uses right. bourbon, or rye instead of, uh, instead of cognac. Mm-hmm. But a company, a CEO comes over, he buys the Sazerac house, Two years later, he buys pay shows and the whole exclusive rights to it, and this is where I get my Sazeracs. I, I have to go to the Sazerac house in order to buy these. Gotcha. It's just a business. So Sazerac is actually owned by uh, owns both Regan's, uh, yeah, a partnership with Regan, and then pay show brand. Huh, okay. Both of them for the same price. Which so is why they can't ship internationally. Because, well, well. Exactly. Yeah, I, I can't buy them internationally, or I can't sell them internationally, so... Um, because they both come from the same place, owned by the same people. Well, Antonin says that Peychaud is available in France, but they don't yeah. ship anywhere else in Europe. Correct. Just France. Peychaud, you could find Peychaud in Canada sometimes. Uh, the difference is Sazerac wants to control the distribution. So if Sazerac builds a distribution hub in France, Sazerac imports to itself. They know the rules and regulations yeah. of, this, of the place. Their big hang-up is they don't know if, if it's going out someplace, if it's considered a food or an alcohol. Yeah. So they have their installation hubs where it's all qualified, and now they know that they know how to, right. and they can come in at the right as the right thing. Um, so for the Sazerac, I forgot about the notes on on a couple of the drinks. So we got some Regans here. Let's so try got, this. Yep, you got Regans comes next for Angostura, popular drinks for the old fashioned Manhattan and the champagne cocktail. Mm-hmm. For Peychaud, it's the Sazerac Volcare and the Sealbach cocktail, which Volcare, is what I have. We had the Volcare and uh, with the guy who went Plantation Rums, he also has the. Uh, yeah, yeah. He, they made the book we, right we, there. So book right there. Um, the Fee Brothers, is that what you're doing? Or are you doing Regan's? This is Regan's. Uh, Fee Brothers was 1963, started by J- James Fee, currently owned by Joe Fee and his sister. Huh. Who um, was at the Bitter Seven Art? Right, and Joe Fee was the one who created the Walnut Bitters from that article I was reading, so that was pretty cool. And I already right. said... That's good stuff, too. Yes. That they focus oh, that's highly... Good. The Regan's with those? That's tasty. So I've had some people say that the, the Regan's was a little bit more um, timid. It is, but it from an orange bitter. Yeah. So Gary Regan and uh, Hardy Regan both created this brand. His, it almost tastes like a soda water. Right, and he was doing recipes. Right, and he said what the classic world needs for classic cocktails is a new as an orange bitter. No other buddy had nobody else nobody had, had orange, orange bitter bitters. Maybe Fee, but nobody really knew about Fee's at that time. Fee's huge now. Uh, so there wasn't really in in the Bergen House have an orange bitter, but. Again, not wasn't either found by Gary or he didn't like it. I don't know. Uh, and he decided I want to create one that fits the cocktail style for classic cocktails. He built number four. In the problem with number four was it was uh, it was too bitter. This is number six. Right. Number four was way too bitter. Number five, he said he made and it was too sweet. So he but he brought it to the TTB and said, Hey, I want to make this a, a non potable bitter. And they're like, It's way too sweet. You can't have that. We can't. There would be an alcohol. Yeah. So. He partnered with the folks at Sazerac, rolled out number six. You can get the, in his, one of his books, you can get this, the number five if you want to make it on your own. Oh, cool. But the number six was the one they went to market with. That's the one that's got the balance. Mm-hmm. Um, it is definitely more subtle. It the is. bitterness is not as present as the other you, one. You get some orange flavor without the bitter, definitely. Right. What's this, that? This is the uh, Fee Aromatic, and it's actually it, it's oh, yeah, kind it's, of close to the Angry Store. The Fee, see, I, I'm getting pretty good at the Aromatic. So that one, I believe, has got... Is that the one that has a lot of um, nut, nut, nutmeg? Am I thinking nutmeg? Yep. Yeah, the nutmeg, right? These things. Yep, 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 yep. These nutmegs? You're, yeah, whole nutmeg. Your nuts of meg. Yeah, yeah, that's definitely it. You can almost well, let's get some spring feel the nutmeg on your tongue on this. Mm-hmm. Right? <laughs> you can feel it now, on your tongue. Now, oh, it's still bitter. Yeah, it's still bitter, but it's really good. So do that with this. 
So this is the Fee Brothers Whiskey Barrel Age. They're made seasonally. This is the 2013. I still have them. Uh, I'm guessing I'm going to have 2014? them. Is this 2014? No, I haven't sold all What I did is I bought a crap load of the 2013 so I could get oh, right. all the way through the season. Good idea. Because there are seasonals. Uh, people haven't bought them as much. They're like almost double the price of the originals because There's they're barrel aged. Mm -hmm. They actually rest these in barrels from a specific brands. This one is Old Tom Gin. Gin. Um, and this one is, I think it's Whiskey. Maker's Mark. Does it say? No. But I believe their makers are, are one of those brands. So they basically, they take their aromatic bitters and they age them. And these ones, I believe, do have alcohol in them or some level of alcohol. Uh, or at least that one does. And, uh, no, it doesn't say. It does say glycerin. Ooh. Angostura bark. If it has Angostura bark, it's going to be bitter. It's bitter. <laughs> but, at the same time... It's got a little bit more depth. It's got a little It's got, yeah. It's not bad. No, it's, it's got more dimension to it, where the other one is more um, nutmeg, right? But boom, boom, nutmeg in your face. Lots of nutmeg. Yeah. The other one has nutmeg, vanilla, and it's a little bit more timid. Still has a lot of bitterness to it. It does. Did you, you try this one with the... the, the not yet. I'm getting to it. Oh, let's go! Let's do this. This is um, the this is the new Bal Berg and Hauk that you're right, carrying, right? Right. So I just started carrying these this week. Steven Berg. Alexander Hauk, 2005, 2006-ish. I think they were here in 2006. If you've had, oh, I left, that's the bottle I left over there. Bitter Truth. It says established in 2006 on the bottle. Yeah. That might, I don't know if that's that brand, I don't know. Um, the Bitter Truth, for people in Europe, that would probably be your go-to bitter. They're the exact same thing. Looks very similar on the label. They have the Creole, they have the Jerry Thomas. They're just not qualified by the TTB to be Darker. a non potable bitter. The reason from my research is that because the Bitter Truth makes both spirits and bitters, when they're importing it to the U.S., it's a whole lot easier to just get a, a license and all the permissions to make uh, to be a spirit <clears throat> a spirit importer. As opposed to a spirit and a... Uh, yeah, it gets iffy. So, well, it gets iffy when it's the same label because it's Bitter Truth. Yeah, yeah. So they spun out a new label. Mm. They call it Burke and Howe, and now they can have a non-potable covered by the TTB so that I can sell them, sell them and everybody else can sell them. I need water because apparently I don't work with my mother's that one. Um, <coughs> hmm. So, in the gin, what is, which one is this? The it's aromatic? It's the Bergenhock. It like smells like a combination. Really it's, it's like good, a combination yeah. of Angostura and Peixot. It's got, it is, it's got yeah. the black licorice, but it's got the nut. Wait, was that the aromatic one? Or yeah. That's yeah. I like their Creole one too. I tried their Creole ahead of time. It's this is by far, good. and what I want to do in the next episode is I want to go through and do an aromatic blind yep. to see what it is. The, I mean, they're, they're different colors, but um, and it doesn't really matter who would win, but I think that's a very multi-dimensional uh, bitter. It tastes like it could be a, a, a standalone beverage on the bitter side, like a Jaeger or a mm. uh, Chartreuse. Like it's Probably. got that, that flavor profile that fits. Where's your uh, baby tears? Maybe tears. Maybe tears. I just want to see if it sweetens it up a little bit. Every time bit. you drip it, you have to cry. Uh, <laughs> I'll cry back in the bottle, replenish. So the Jerry Thomas bitters that they have right here, these ones, by the way, for those that don't know who Jerry Thomas is, he's like the Elvis or maybe the Jimi Hendrix of, of the cocktail world of bartending. Uh, really? Yeah, Flair, he's right? like the, no, he, well, he's the like the founding father of like the cocktail movement. Oh, okay. So It's like the George Washington. Okay, he's like the George Washington of the United States. Uh, yeah, I like that. That's that. Well, it's like, he's like the the cream on an I, uh, uh, on an ice cream. No, uh, so Jerry Thomas has he has a book. It's uh, the Bartender's Guide or Bon Vivant, such as whatever. It's I have it upstairs. Uh, Jerry Thomas he has had his own cream. bitter. He has a lot of books Believe that he doesn't me. know the right. titles of. And I know, <laughs> <laughs> but he had his own like his own bitter recipe or whatnot. And the bitter recipe he had or used had an illegal ingredient and probably wormwood or something. Yeah. Um, so what these guys yeah, did is the Bergen Alp guys said, hey, let's let's recreate this. We'll remove that ingredient, make it so it passes legal Standards. limits, but still has the same flavor profile and lower the boom. Fusion content. Yeah, and then they also the Creole. For the um, international viewers. For the international viewers. Especially the one in the chat room that's asking. The TTV? Yeah. It used oh. to be the ATF, which was the Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms yeah. Bureau, which the, is the government agency. Now it's the Tobacco, tobacco. and tra uh, Tobacco Trade Bureau? Tobacco? Something and... to do with alcohol and tobacco. Yeah. 
So they just it's just a new bureau. Yeah, it's it's I so, think the fire the com- combination of the firearms and tobacco and alcohol I think was a pre-prohibition or prohibition yeah. relic. And, and basically in the U.S., if you want to brew beer, on, so they regulate how you can brew beer, how you can do alcohol, how you can import and uh, export uh, alcohol, all these right. things. Like I know when I, when when you're brewing, you can brew up to 100 gallons of beer as a home brewer, yep. and 200 if there's two adults in the house. But after that. You got to get a license. Not that they're going to enforce that, but for microbreweries, you got to get licensed Some through level the TTB. Licensing. If you want to distill <clears throat> anything, you have to get licensed through the uh, TTB to do that in the U.S. Right. Make a moonshine. Mm. So, a 2006, which one is this? That's Creole in my face. <laughs> it's right. Re- uh huh. Look at that. It's right. Just like patient. It's like the other Creole. Yeah. Crazy. Well, you know what? Ooh, it smells nice. It doesn't have the chocolate tone. But you still get the anise, the star yeah. anise. The other thing, and, and some of this stuff gets um, tricky. Wait, no, why is that peach? There, see, we got the Aztec chocolate bitters, right? Yeah. These came out later on in the life cycle fees. Ooh, and, and who had a comment about the Aztec chocolate but the folks that do the chocolate and oh, yeah. bitters, right? That so the bitter was like, oh, look at this. Somebody's releasing a bitter that's like ours. I get what you're doing here. I see how this is going to go down. Chocolate bitters became a thing. Right. So... Then we step in, we're over to Adams. Adam is from Aberdeen, uh, what do you call that place? England? Scotland. Scotland. Um, he's going to kill me for that. So, <laughs> he's he's like, going to kill you. Uh, no, Adam. Oh, Adam's, Adam's going to kill you. Yeah. So, All those Scots going to kill you. They just voted for their non independence yesterday. Yeah. Oh, really? That's cool. So, again, inspired. So just call them England. Inspired by Jerry <laughs> Thomas, there's. Oh, they didn't want to be. No, they didn't vote. They voted not to be really? separate. Uh, really? Yep. This is from that same guy I was talking about from Jerry Thomas. The guy um, you don't remember? Or? No, Jerry Thomas wrote oh, the book. Okay. Oh, dude, try this. So those are Boker's. Oh, way long delay on that. But Should those go in the water? <laughs> is that what you're saying? Yeah, probably. <laughs> Boker's Bitters was an, uh, another a brand. Oh, whoa, that's nice. Those poor nice. Yeah, those poor uh, nice. Was another brand, or maybe a brand or a recipe of bitters made by a man that created this bitter that started getting used in cocktails. Prohibition comes into play. They end up chapter 9 or whatever you call it when you go away. Exactly. Product goes away. No more bogus bitters. Chapter 11, yeah. 9 is like a warning. Um, and so 9 is like <laughs> agricultural. <laughs> whatever. Uh, so <laughs> Adam's g- goal was, hey, let's rebuild the Boker's bitters because guess what? It would be nice to be able to make those recipes that were once called for. These Boker's bitters, a cardamom oh, based bitter. Baby tears. Uh, baby tears this is another one, Boker style from from, from uh, Fee, Fee, that which, just came out like three weeks ago. But we got a preview in New Orleans because they were giving. Whoa, dude! Those will rip you a new face hole. They do. Boker's bitters are very bitter. They're m- probably one of three, the three most baby bitter. tears does to it. Oh. <laughs> three baby tears. So then Adam decided to make a bitter based on. Um, uh, a soda from Britain, I think, that he really likes, which is a, a Dandelion bur- Burdock. Oh, my God! Soda. <laughs> I, now I'm just always afraid. I live in fear. Um, sale. So the wet willy. This is, this is based on what his envisionment of a really... Uh, Dandelion uh, A youth favor. Like, if you if Dandelion. something from your youth that you really like that was... For me, it would be Devil Dog. So I'd want to create a Devil Dog bitter. He really <laughs> like dandelions in his youth. What it's a dandelion. It's a soda. Dandelions it's a soda. are very bitter. Yeah, and it is, and, and they're yeah. they're. Well, you can put them in sodas. I mean, that's what he's doing actually right now. Uh, dandelion greens keep people cook and eat them. Dandelion. I, I okay, I get that. I get the dandelion. Why is that a fond memory from his childhood? I don't know. Maybe somebody did It's a soda. Eat it. There's a specific. It's it'd be like saying like my brother is a big fan of Moxie. Moxie. Love Moxie. Right. So again. Yeah. You would probably be like, if you wanted good. to create your own bitter, you're like, I want to create a bitter that tastes like Moxie. Yeah. And then you pour it out and you go, Moxie bitters. We well, probably give it a different name because you probably get sued. But mm. the end result is you create your own bitter based on what you like. And that's, that's what, what they did. did. And then from there, you went on to Spanish bitters. You got Aphrodite bitters, the teapot bitters. And then um, this good. is a Christmas collaboration is with Heather Duncan for the Christmas bitters. That Jimmy line's good. I sell these and it's not even Christmas and they sell. But because they're awesome. Yeah, it's probably has to do with being awesome. Well, they don't sell a lot. No, no, but I, I. It's they, Christmas time they do. But. They sold. I wouldn't have thought of buying Christmas bitters before Christmas. No, that's yeah. because you don't prepare. 
Right. You should have talked like or, a pirate last Friday. These or so, before Halloween, buying the horror infused tropically fiendish bitters. Yeah, I'm gonna need to do a Halloween recipe. Yeah. Boom. There's a there's a reason What's they're this? staged right here. So that awesome. my friends, Avery and Janet Glazer created their own bitter. You so drunk they, off bitters, man. Yeah, I actually, you know. <laughs> so that's that is weird. I do have a little bit of yeah. the buzz. That's that's awesome. Uh, bitter buzz shows you that this works. So they created a like a like a Mexican I would guess a mole sauce, and and that was their prototype for mole bitters. So they they went to Holy they mole. created the mole bitters, and at some point in time they wanted to I guess be able to scale or maybe not do as much work out of their house or something. So they contracted out with the Bergen House folks mm -hmm. to create a line of Bitterman's. It was like Bitterman's AG or A A G or that's their LLC name, right? So Bitterman's was really made by these guys in huh. their house shipped here problem being again non-potable wasn't wasn't happening mm. so bitter mints could only be sold in a liquor store oh, so that's frustrating right and it was okay until the market kind of declined and people weren't necessarily always going to liquor stores as much so they took the recipes back they expanded it and they made they brought back one of their original ones which they didn't make in uh germany which was the boston bitter and there was another one oh, in there. Better not have made that in Germany. Yeah. Whoa. Oh, fucking A guy. What am I drinking here? Oh, this is the mole. Yeah. And the New England spiced cranberry. Very chocolatey. Come on. New England spiced cranberry. Oh yeah, yeah. That's a Those are over here. So news on these. I have two of these New England spiced cranberries left in the store. Once somebody buys them, I don't know when I'm going to get them again. The coffee bitters. These are from New Orleans. Those are from somewhere. New England. They're supposedly regional, right? Okay. So they're made with regional ingredients. But uh, from what I've heard, well, um, Let's find out there. Jen and Avery said that they're too busy to make them this year, so they won't have the seasonals. Uh oh. So, so I you got some I, of the last ones. I don't know what I'm gonna do. Well, the, I think the bar that actually invented the New England came and bought them all from us or something, because we had like 14 of them. It's great for me. Which is this? The, the Ooh, cranberry. That's oh, yeah. oh. Yeah. yeah, but it's not bitter like uh, the Boker's was. It's, no. It's completely it's different part of the It's part of your mouth. Yeah, it's weird. That's weird how it just twists your face into weird... What's that? Coffee? Coffee. Uh -huh. Coffee. Coffee. Uh, that's cranberry. Give me the coffee. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on a roll. I'm on a roll. Uh, I, at the beginning, I said, we'll just taste a couple of them, and he's like, I'm gonna keep going! Boom, boom, boom! Challenge yeah. accepted. We're gonna get wrecked on no bitters! bitters. That's, that's so weird! The, no, no bitters from Australia? I don't have any bitters from Australia. I've never heard... Uh, Australia buys bitters from us, but I don't know if they have their own brands. Uh, the only ones I know of are Germany, Scotland, uh, United States. Huh. I mean, we're the kind of the hub for bitters. That's good. Coffee bitters? Yeah. Mm, coffee. Like, oh, wow. It smells... You know, it, 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 it smells, smells like a coffee. No, it <laughs> smells like the cup when, when you have an empty coffee... Uh, cup? Cup, or like the thing you make oh, coffee. The pot? The pot? Yeah, you yeah. smell inside of it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's got that. It smells like a ground like beans. Like a roast. Yeah. Like yeah, yeah, like a roast, yeah. Mm -hmm. It tastes good too. Ooh, a little bit of bitter coffee. Here. Huh? Your episode's getting very I was thinking that. Here. Okay. Um, so then you have Nicholas and Ira who in two thousand nine created the line of bitter cube bitters. Uh, the two guys behind here, uh, they they kinda I guess were testing some of this in a bar and all of a sudden it became popular and they made their own bitters. They also do a contract they contract out so if you wanted to have your own bitter you can call them and say how much can it cost me i'm going to need this many bitters blah 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 and these guys have been on they've been rated and they've been on martha stewart they've been in by magazine playboy uh bloomberg business week so they're they're Wait, pretty playboy popular. yeah playboy has like a little cocktail page. that's cool yeah i don't want to be there i i kind of pissed off because small screen network was in there and they're the ones i do some of my ads mm. ads with Ooh. so if you remember the horror infused that's what's in here so Horror Infused is a contract out. You notice the bottle and everything is about the same. Yeah, yeah. So the guys at Horror and Clay now, you went to these guys. You to have make a their great beverage. drink. You have your uh, ooh, uh, your it's Horror Infused Mai Tai, which molasses. was your 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 cocktail recipe, mm. right? And it's a great drink that uses these Horror Infused bitters. That's got like a definitely more of a rum molasses mm. blend, not as bitter as some of the other bitters. Uh, Miles Scrappy Thomas does the Scrappy bitters. Yep. Scrappy bitters are I found that a lot of them very vibrant flavor all locally sourced from the Seattle, Washington area for the flavors. He likes to just spill it on himself right there if you want to see where it is. Uh, Chocolate's good. So their signature bitter 
is the aromatic lavender, which is the one I put up front. So the lavender bitter from here, if you're looking to say, what does Scrappy's bitters represent? The lavender bitter is their number one. The best seller, okay. however, is the cardamom bitters, and it sells really well for us too. And really? when I say best seller, I'm talking like from what I've read in books. But I can tell you from firsthand knowledge, the cardamom sell probably the best in the store because people buy them in sets of 12 sometimes. Wow. And I, so I bought- No, well, lavender sells pretty well. That's, a, that's the thing though. Lavender doesn't sell too bad her. either. So, it, but they're out of all the, the brands, aside from the fact that somebody came and bought all of our Hellfire this week, out of all the different brands, besides Fee, because they're cheaper, from an artisanal level, like 17 to $20 a bitter, these guys, I mean, this is $20 for a bottle of bitters and people will buy them in a case. Is this lavender? You tell me. <laughs> That's lavender. That's bitter. You're a fan of that, huh? Whoa, that's closer to the Malort level of, of bitterness. Mm. Like it strikes you right in the face. Strong. It's kicking you in the junk hole. <laughs> I, don't even want, I don't even know what the junk hole is. You know, it's right. Really? Oh! You're gonna go through all those cards. I've only got two cards left. Maybe all right. three. All right, let's uh, do it. Zachary does bitters old men. Yeah. So these were from 2009. Zachary, are they, listen, are they the ones who do the macadamia nut bitters? Yep. Yeah. And awesome smoke bitters. is in your bitters. Smoke is in your bitters are sold out. That was He's, great with the. Uh, Zachary's having a hard time keeping up with demand. Which is why I'm always sold out. The drink that Doug made with the tobacco vodka and the... Great 28? Yeah. Oh, that was... Yeah, yeah, you're right. The one that had tobacco vodka, the smoke, it's in your bitters. uh, So he's only got a a few lines that are running right now, mainly four. Uh, The Great 28 sell out a lot. Those ones, I'm having a hard time getting him to focus on sending me some stuff, Zach. Uh, But once he does, we're good. I'm not going to bother opening this one because the trick with the stirrings, blood oranges, first off, is the only blood orange bitter that seems to exist today and it's it's required in some cocktails mm-hmm. it's a little bit sweeter it doesn't have alcohol it doesn't have preservatives it's got to go in the refrigerator ah, so, so if you're going to be that, yeah. going through a lot of bitters that's the way to go because it's a big bottle um hella bitters was a kickstarter project that wasn't sorry <laughs> so this is a kickstarter project uh from you can try those if you want uh kickstarter project that was successful turns into a full new york business um and then you've mm. got dutch's spirits Dutch's is a, a brand they, uh, that does moonshine. They do the Pro Bitters? And that Pro Bitters, they do Pro Bitters. The first one they did was Colonial Bitters. Then they came out with the Pro Bitters and the Boomtown Bitters that's later. Good. So That's good. From the, oh, it's like spicy. The Hella Bitters. The Hella are Bitters aromatic. are? Yeah. The, oh, yeah. It dilutes down in water a little bit. Mm-hmm. So Dutch's was 2011, and then in 2012, 13 they came out with the, these other two so boom town. you can get them the boom town yeah. um, and then of course we've got the wiggle coming these are pom- pomander orange uh, mole so another person with a mole style flavor rosemary and lavender rosemary is a little scary for me mm. um, aromatics so if you're looking for more aromatics accept. they've got them exactly and then last you can get Bob's bitters like I said they're really expensive mm. uh, San oh, Francisco the bitters that's the rosemary I guess and if you don't know what you want to try Here's what you do. Yes. So and this looks like a good one. Right. This is the Bergen Hauch Bitters kit. So which is these? Which right. It'll they have don't these, have Jerry Thomas in there. Which will, okay. So it'll have the Creole and the aromatics. It has aromatic, celery, orange, lemon, Creole. Okay. That, I don't currently stock celery, orange, or lemon because of the amount of money. I that's good in because these. aromatics are very versatile. Yeah. The Creole bitters is actually pretty good. I went with the and ones that were unique to the store. Orange is pretty standard, and then celery is really good for Bloody Marys. Right, and there's a lot of different celery options. So if you are big into celery, so be it. And then Scrappies, these are the two boxes. They have a new one coming out next year. But these are lavender celery, orange aromatic, and this one's lime, chocolate, cardamom, grapefruit. So this one is like, if you're going to make classic cocktails, since it's got the aromatic and the orange, which are your Mm go-tos, and then the lavender and celery, you can get those, and they're in small Those are awesome drinks, right? And the great thing about those little sampler packs is a little bit of bitters goes a long way in a drink. So if you're experimenting, get the sample packs, and you can do a lot of experimentation. Right. And when you get something that you like, and you find a bitter that you like, then you can upgrade to the bigger bottles right. that are going to last you a little longer. And these are the small bottles from these guys. They come in sets of three. Uh, we also sell the bigger bottles. Good too, yeah. uh, but smaller ones are easier because they're not cheap, right? So if you're going to end yeah. up buying a lot, which is why I like the fact that the horror guys came out with the small bottles first. Because yeah. all these guys have big bottles for a lot of their stuff. It's, you're, when you're looking at a $20 a bottle, it would be nice to be able to have one because this is going to last you a while. It is. You don't need to spend $20. You can spend half that and get the same flavor experience. The same for these. If you want to get the samplers, they have both aromatic mm. 
and the uh, citrus in the smaller bottles. Jamaican number two is pretty good. Yeah. You could, yeah, you can go down the line of I could all, taste all the this. bitter go. cube. Their best sellers are the cherry vanilla bark and the orange, which is very flavorful. Mm, so what I want to do, wow. and the good. next episode is we'll go through some uh, aromatics. And then we'll try, if we can do that quick enough, we'll go through citrus in another right. episode. Well, let's do that. So there you go. That gives you a little glimpse of all the different things around bitters, including how to neutralize them yes. with saline. With baby tears. With baby tears. Um, some of the different histories on Campari? Let me try that with the Campari. I want to see if I can. He's going he's gonna to see if he can actually stand Campari I don't without Campari anyway. question of the day. What spices do you usually use in your food? Because what we're doing here is showing you the Drink different spices. salt and peppers, seasonings, uh, any type of any type of spice that you use for cooking. Not only can you use these for cooking or ice creams and, and sodas, but it's the same theory. You're making a cocktail and you want to be able to spice it. If you eat just if you just have a piece of meat, <laughs> the way that I would like do that. street meat, like street meat, the way he does it. Street meat. You add a little bit of salt to it. So a little, maybe a little bit of pepper, and it changes the entire experience. It, it, it gives it a new dimension. This is the same thing. If you have a cocktail and you're like, man, it's a little flat, it's a little disjointed, you throw a bitter in there, problem goes away, and you're like, holy crap. And then you compare them with the specific flavors that make sense. And I'll talk about what pairs with what spirit when we do the next two, because orange and citrus are the way. Orange is citrus. Orange and aromatic have a play. Something that's really cool about playing with bitters, you're going to expand your palate when you start playing with bitters oh because God. you're going to have all these different tastes and you're going to start becoming a lot more in tune with your own taste buds. Yeah, and you'll start to pick out like, that one's cinnamon, that one's nutmeg, that one's coriander, that one's celery seed. You know, you'll, and, and, and if you really want to get into it, you can do what the what uh, happened at the, uh, at the break them down. tails of the cocktail and you can take the individual ingredients and do like... Aloe, take take aloe and do an aloe tincture where yeah. you just have that aloe taste or cardamom or uh, and you can get those at the witch doctor's cassis or all these other uh, Flavor. flavors. There's so yeah, many flavors. different types of bitters that you can try that go into all these. Right, and you can really if you go to the witch doctor store, aka any international store that has like a bunch of bags of, of stuff of herbs and stuff like that. You can you can pull these apart and start making your own bitters too, or just put them in your mouth. Um, so. Let's let's finish off with what what this does for your face. Is it going to make you happy, sad, or are you going to be indifferent? What, this? I've already, I've already done a little bit with this. Right. Oh, how did it come out? You're not crying, so I'm guessing it worked. That makes a big difference. Is it flavorful now? Yeah. It still smells like Campari. Well, it's still Campari. Yeah. No, it's actually got it's but, sweeter. Yeah, it's a lot. It almost sweeter. has like a ju it's almost like and a juice now. Campari is a little sweet to start with. I mean, it's bitter, but it's, it's but also the bitter sweet. hits you. Yeah. The bitter hits you. This so. softens it up, and you get the sweet. So, if you want to be able to taste some of those bitters, as you have to figure out how to pair them in a cocktail, neutralize the bitter flavor and the component to figure that out. That's it, folks. Another question of the day. Question of the day. Another one. What do bitters do you associate with your part of the world? Boston bitters. <laughs> <laughs> what bitter do you associate with your part of the world? I don't know how many of us have. Uh, I mean, I don't know if we have chamomile around here. Yeah, uh, I would sure. think cranberry bitters would be more yeah, like that makes sense. I could see the dandelion also. Yeah, we have dandelions. Yeah. I'm not sure if everybody has dandelions. I don't know. Why you they guys seem to be weeds? They grow everywhere. All right. So, I, what are the flavor profiles that make you think? Because yeah, then they turn into the white things and they spray. They blow everywhere. <laughs> yeah, you don't want to spray your white thing. Yeah. Um, I, I want to spray my white thing. <laughs> <laughs> you may have already. That's just me. I may have. <laughs> I have a, There's no telling how many kids I got out there. <laughs> 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 Somebody's gonna know. Somebody's gonna know. Um, so, hopefully, you stuck around for the entire episode. That's it. If you did, you don't win a prize. Congratulations. But good job. Congratulations. <laughs> you win. Would you, you like survive? to continue? Because I wasn't going to vote to leave. It's like 2048. You win. Would you like to continue? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. We'll, we'll be seeing you later. You can go to Awesome Drinks to buy all this crap. Yes. Um, all everyday this drinkers awesome for all drinks. the cocktails that uses a lot of this stuff. Yes. Or all of it, actually. All of this and more. I'll say of that at Awesome Drinks. Everything is more. It's always Everything better and, and more. more. We're done. We're teaching you how to bid it.